Hi there, let's make some paper using flower petals. I have some dried lavender petals that I collected from my garden and some rose petals that I purchased. You can use petals from your garden that you dried or fresh. You can also purchase flower petals like I did and use them in your paper or purchase flower, flower petals that are specifically pressed for paper making. So there are multiple workspaces that you're going to need for paper making. The first is to start making your slurry. And so you're going to need a flat surface with a outlet that you can set up your blender and do all your blending of the scrap paper that you're going to be making your slurry from. Then you're going to need a surface with a towel on it that you can use to have your bin of slurry and to start to process your hand dipped paper. And then you'll need somewhere to dry the paper. And this is preferably somewhere that is flat and has breathing holes in it. I have this piece of pegboard that I lay the sheets out and the holes allow it to dry more quickly. You could also lay out a piece of mesh or use a window screen and lay your paper out on a window screen so that it has lots of ventilation. I have the tools and the materials in the description below. I'll go over them quickly now. You have you'll need a blender for making the slurry water liquid starch, your flower petals, and I have mine soaking in some water in preparation, scrap paper. I'm using cotton linters, which is a cotton material that will add density to your paper and strength. And then a baca fiber, which is another thing that adds strength to your, to your paper. And then some sort of dipping frame or dipping screen for paper making. I have this wooden frame, a piece of window screening and this grid screen to create my dipping frame. I pile these up and then this is a piece of plastic screening that I put over the freshly dipped paper to squeeze out any excess water. A rubber brayer, measuring spoons, a stir spoon, scissors are always handy just in case, and a towel to cover your surface. And you want some sort of container, waterproof container that you can put your slurry and water in so that you can dip into it. And you want something that's large enough that when you put your screen down into the water, you can go at an angle, slide under, and there's enough water over top to cover the top of the screen and enough around the sides that you can put it in and still have room around you to move. Before we start making the slurry, let's talk about the flower petals. If you're using dry petals, they're going to be light. They will float on top of the slurry bath. So when you bring up your paper, you'll have lots of flower petals on top, which looks cool. But as the paper dries, they may not have been embedded into the paper fibers. And so they'll just start to scratch off. So one way to avoid that happening is to soak your petals in a bowl of water overnight or for a few hours so that they can absorb the water and then they will absorb into the paper slurry and meld into the fibers of the paper slurry so that the paper is stronger and the flower petals get incorporated into the slurry. So that's one way that I've found to avoid that. If you don't want to soak them, you can put them right on, right in with your slurry, blend it up with one of your batches of slurry. And uh, then at the end, you'll just put a clear finish on with a spray can or some Mod Podge on to seal, seal the petals into the paper. Okay, here is my paper dipping bin that I will be using. I've started a slurry in here. So I have some petals, some paper slurry, some cotton linter and a baca fiber. And I'll just be adding this to, adding to this to create a paper slurry to dip from. So to create your paper slurry in your blender, Let's start out by taking two sheets of scrap paper. I'll be using scrap printer paper for the slurry that I'm making. So if you have scrap paper you wanna use or old tissue paper that you wanna try, maybe some recycled packing paper, go ahead and experiment with different types of paper to create your slurries. So I'm going to take two sheets of this, this printer paper and tear it into strips down the length of the page. Go in one direction and then you're going to tear them up into bits in the other direction and add them to your blender. Oh, 
like so. And then add two jars of water to your blender to cover the paper. And this is a pint jar, so two pints of water, or enough water that you can cover the paper and there's room for it to move around. Once you've put your water in, you can go ahead and blend this. I like to do it on a puree setting and then move to chopped. And a quick note on blenders. This blender that I have is a Goodwill blender. Um, it was used and I bought it specifically for paper making and natural dyeing. So it probably don't want to use your kitchen blender for paper making because little bits of the slurry, which is the ground up paper, get stuck in places and that doesn't really taste good in this movie. So um, have something specific for paper making, some sort of blender or food processor. And you want to blend it up for about 15 to 20 seconds so that you end up with a nice smooth consistency in the paper bits so that it, it, there aren't any large chunks and it's more of a fine powdery texture. And then add this to your bin of slurry, pour it in. We'll be adding more water later to add liquid to the texture of our total slurry. Just add your blenderfuls of slurry to the slurry bin as we blend these pages up. I suggest starting with eight to 12 sheets of, of scrap paper because that will give you enough slurry to experiment with the paper frame and dipping paper and make some nice sheets of handmade paper. Now for this next blender, I'm going to do two pieces of paper again cut them or tear them in one direction and then break them up into little pieces in the other direction. And then we're going to add the flower petals. So I have a tablespoon of lavender petals and a tablespoon of rose petals in here and they smell really good. It's like a lavender rose tea. So your handmade paper with petals, especially scented petals like rose and lavender, end up smelling really nice because of the floral scent. So I'll add this guy to my blender, scrape everything in here. And you can check the consistency. This is really foamy. Yep, looks good. And then pour it into your bin. And now I'm going to do a blender with the abaca fiber, this fiber here. I've cut small pieces of it so that it's broken up into smaller pieces. And I'm going to put that in first and add some water so it has a few minutes to soak before I start blending it. So add water. And then you want about a palmful or a handful of cotton linter for your batch of slurry. So add that in. And then let's do one page of scratch paper. and then add some more water. Okay, and then we'll blend up this guy. And this is a nice thick one because of the cotton winter, so you can see it's quite thick. That and the abaca fiber. Okay, go ahead and continue to make blenders of the slurry with your scratch paper until you have enough slurry in your bin that it moves around easily and you have a, can get a good handful when you lift up some of the slurry. And that will give you enough to move around and to create nice sheets when you're dipping. Once you have ground up all your paper and you have a nice slurry, we're going to add some water to make it more fluid, some liquid starch to help the paper be nice and firm and the texture be good for using. And you can also add an acid reducer, which will take the acidity of the paper down so that it lasts longer. So first of all, let's add in some water so that it moves around nicely. And then you can use your hand or a stir spoon to mix up your bin.
And if you were using two pints of water per two sheets of paper for the slurry in the blender, then you're probably going to need about two to four quarts of additional water once your slurry has been built up. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of liquid starch per quart of water. And I'm going to estimate on mine, a quart would be about a blender full of the slurry. So count however many blenders full you created and then um, add that amount of the liquid starch. So if you did 12 sheets, eight to 12 sheets, like I was suggesting, that would be four to six quarts. So you need four to six tablespoons of liquid starch. and then your acid reducer if you're going to add that. And then stir the liquid starch and any other additives you wanna put in into your bin. This is a good time to add in food coloring if you're going to be coloring your paper. And you can also look at the consistency of your slurry and see if the amount of flower petals in your bin is what you will want. If you look at the surface here, I have it somewhat stirred up and you can see the lavender petals and the rose petals on the surface and that's a pretty good gauge of how many petals you'll end up per sheet of paper. If you want more density of petals, go ahead and grind up another tablespoon of each or um, play around with how much you want to add to your slurry. When you've added enough water that your slurry moves around freely and you have some water over top and it's deep enough that your frame can fit in, then you're ready to start dipping. For the frame, hold it over the the grating and the screen so that the screen is sandwiched between the two and hold the sides so you have a nice firm grasp on both sides. If you dip and then loosen your grasp, the screen will lift up, bubble up, and then you won't get a nice dipped piece of paper. So making sure it's set evenly on your grating and then the frame goes over top and you hold that firmly will ensure that your dip is nice and clean. So bring it over to your bin. You're going to dip from one side, dip down at a 45 degree angle, and then slide it into the bin and under the slurry, kind of shaking the slurry around on the frame to even out the density of the slurry. And your first piece of paper will probably be pretty thick because there's a high density of slurry to water. So shake around your frame a bit and then lift up and allow water to drain out of the frame and tamp it down. And you can see, lift up the frame and see, ended up with a very dense piece of paper. So you can either try to dip it again or press this out and go ahead and go with this thickness of paper. If you want to reset your screen, dump off the slurry, kind of move it around and try to just let it float on top of the slurry to get as much of the particles off as possible so that it sits nice and evenly on your grating and then you can stick the frame right on top again. So we'll dip again, sliding under the slurry like so, moving back and forth and then lift up. And there I got a nice collection of flower petals around there. I'm going to tap off some excess water and then lift off my frame. And you can see this is a nice density of paper with a nice thickness there. So I'm gonna tap off some more water and then grab your piece of plastic mesh screening and lay it over top of the paper and I like to rotate it so I have a better grip on one end and I can hold it over the bin. And you're going to press out some water with your brayer. So sliding it against the wall of the bin and then pressing firmly with your brayer to work out excess water. And if you hold the bottom and you put the other end on the edge of the opposite side of your bin. From you, you'll be able to press down and the water will seep down the page and you'll get more water out that way.
Okay, and then once you've pressed out quite a bit of water that way, we're going to transfer, transfer this to your tabletop with your towel on it and do another pressing from the other side, like so. And then you can gently lift up the screen, the mesh screen. And now we're ready to transfer this to your drying rack. So I have my drying rack here. I'll set it up here on my bin. I'm going to flip this over gently so that I don't tear anything. Place it on my drying rack where I want it to go. And then carefully lift up a corner and start to move the paper along or the screen along rather off of the paper gently moving so you don't tear the paper as you're going and lay it out flat you can adjust things if you need to and now you can set this aside to dry and continue to add sheets to it as you dip paper okay let's go for another sheet so again you're going to slide your frame in at an angle into the water move things around and lift up and shake out excess water. Now at this point, if you want to add flower petals to your paper, you can take some of your dried or fresh petals, sprinkle them on and press them into the paper and then take some slurry up with your hand, cup it over and embed the petals by pouring some slurry over top of the petals. And that will ensure that they are embedded into the paper and won't just scrape, scrape off once the paper is dry. And you want to get a cupful with some slurry and some water so that it drains off your hand. Like so, that so doesn't totally cover, cover your petals. this off and we'll do the same thing with the pressing out the water process putting the screening on and pressing the water down the length of the page and I do two to three sometimes four passes with the brayer to try to squeeze out as much water as possible this will ensure that the paper that you're squeezing out water into your slurry bin and not just letting it sit on the drying rack for days and days to get it to dry. So again, I'll flip it over and squeeze from the other side onto my towel. And if you're doing this on your tabletop, after you've done a couple of sheets, your towel will become very uh, soaked. And so you'll need to change out towels or start to use cooch sheets, which are sheets of paper that absorb more moisture to press out more moisture out of your paper. And then transfer this to your drying rack. Keep playing around with the frame and the slurry until you feel like you have a handle of how deep to go in the slurry and can somewhat control the amount of uh, thickness your paper ends up with. Some of it is dependent on how much space you have in your bin and how much slurry you started out with. And some of it is learning how to feel the frame and process the frame as you're moving it around and lifting it out. When you've dipped as many sheets as you want to, or you filled your drying rack like I have, then you will want to set these aside somewhere cool and dry so that they can completely air dry. Usually that takes about 24 hours to get them to dry. And then once they are dry, I suggest putting them under a heavy book, setting, putting them in a stack and then putting a heavy book on top of them. will press them out flat. As they dry, they start to kind of get crinkly and 
end up not being completely flat to start out with so the pressure will help with that like this video if you enjoyed enjoyed paper making and want to see more paper making videos or other fiber art videos and subscribe so you get notified whenever I put out a new video. I'd love to hear what flowers you use petals from to make your own paper. Leave a comment below and thanks for watching. Happy paper making. See you next time.